I'm Devin Schmidt. And I'm Tommy Evans. We run Droids Recording Studio. And in this one, one of our other producer buddies, Ryan, asked, do you guys usually apply EQ first or compression first? Ryan, that's a good question. Thank you. It's an easy one, too. I think we can probably blast right through it. The obvious answer is compression. EQ. Compression. EQ. Compression. EQ. Intro. Be compression, man, you idiot. Q. So maybe it's not as easy as you thought. I think you're right. Let's jump into the computer and see if we can come to a compromise. All right, team, this is Tommy Evans. Devin and I run George Recording Studio, and we, uh, we are audio engineers that specialize in heavy music, and we make videos about the recording and the mixing process of that. If this is something that you're into, I want to thank you in advance for hitting subscribe and by tapping that little bell icon so that you get notified every time we post something new. Let's jump right in. Do you EQ first or do you compress first? Um, all kidding aside, kind of both. The answer is yes. And let me dive right in and I'll show you what exactly I mean. So this is a, um, a song called Burial of Silence by the band Rebuild the Evil. I did not record these guys. I simply downloaded these raw files off of the Cambridge Mixing website. I will most definitely link to that in the low end for you so that you can download these exact same raw files and either follow along or apply your own mixing techniques to it if you prefer. So this is the this is a snare. We're going to be working on a snare this time. This is a snare heavy part of the song. Here we go. So that's what it sounds like. Now we've got a snare top mic, a snare bottom mic, and they also provided a snare sample as well. If you wanted to just outright outright replace or reinforce, as some people like to say, um, blend the live snare and the sample snare together. You can do that. That's pretty common. I've decided to blend all three to make one cool snare sound, but we're going to be focusing just on the top snare for this video. Um, here's what it sounds like raw. Take the reverb off. Okay, not bad at all. So where you'll notice that I've got an EQ, an SSL channel strip, and then another EQ in my chain, and that's it. Um, EQ and compression, that's all we're doing to the snare. We're also adding some verb uh, later, but uh, this, this is not that kind of video. So let's go through. I'm going to engage one at a time, and I'm going to tell you what I'm doing and why I'm doing it. Uh, so here we go. Do you EQ first? I guess, yes, literally, technically, I EQ first before I compress, but let me explain what I'm doing. So if you'll notice here, let's play the snare again. You'll see a lot of low end down here. I'm going to turn that off and I'm going to turn that off too. Right in there. So there's not a whole lot of gross low end going on, but there is still some rumble that I just don't want in a snare drum. That's going to take away from other elements like the toms and the kick and the bass potentially. So uh, you'll see me roll this high pass up to where I, to wherever I want. Really check it out. Probably there. It looks like it's 86 or something. Um, and you'll, and then if you remember, I had a cut here right around 1.6 K. Let me show you why I'm going to bring it back to seven something and boost. It's going to sound nasty in this. I don't think this will hurt you, but check this out. Hear that ringy kind of papery sound. Most live snares have that. I don't hate that. But what I do hate is you'll hear it when I get to 160 or 1.6. Do 
that whistly sound right there. A lot of snares have that. And for me, uh, I absolutely hate it. So I, what I usually do is I'm cleaning up the low end. I go and find that super high whistle that I don't like, and then I just take it out. Something like that. Cool. So now all we've done is subtractive EQ. I've cleaned up the low end. I got rid of that one whistly frequency I, I know I don't like. Now I'm going to activate the uh, SSL channel strip plugin. Uh, you'll see this EQ has another high pass at 70. It's not doing any boost over here until you get to the low end. If you remember seeing over here on this first stock EQ, this snare has a natural boost at 200. That's its Base frequency is what I call that. Um, now, I don't want to boost that with the stock EQ, not because I don't like the stock EQ. Obviously, I use it all over the place. But when it comes to boosts like this, I just prefer the sound of the SSL channel strip boost. So I located its main frequency, and I boosted that sucker 4 dBs. Um, Oh, I'm jumping ahead a little bit. Before I did that, whoop, I came over here and I initiated the compressor as well. Um, Ratio is four to one, threshold is negative 20 because it's a loud snare track. Um, release is as fast as it can go without hitting the fast. Yeah, the release is as fast as it can go. I don't have the fast attack um, mode engaged because on a, on a drum sound, you have that initial transient. If you hit fast attack on that, it's gonna try and clamp in that transient and it's, it's gonna sound like you're choking it. I don't want that. Uh, the gate is initiated as well. We're not talking about that in this video though. So let's see what we have so far. Oh, and also before I forget, I have the compressor being routed through this channel out button to come before this additive 4 dB boost at 200. So, so far in the chain, we've got the stock EQ, clean up the low end, take out the whistle, then turn on the compressor. And the reason why I have the compressor after the clean up EQ is because I don't want all this low end in the snare drum to trick the compressor into working harder than it has to. Um, most compressors react faster to low end sounds and it makes them feel like they're working harder than they actually have to. They could law could cause some pumping. So anyways, and also I don't want this whistly frequency in here, this 1.6 in my final tone of the snare. Uh, so I'm not going to compress that sound either. I don't want to turn that sound up at all. Here we go. Subtractive EQ, got the compressor engaged, and then in the chain, I've boosted the 200. Let's see where we're at so far. Okay, so we're getting there. You'll see I'm doing a max of 6 dB gain reduction on this thing. Pretty moderate, I would say, for for a mix like mine. Now I'm going to engage this last EQ. Again, there's another high pass at 70-ish just because I'm OCD and I don't want anything messing with my bass in, in, the, in the final mix. Uh, what's more importantly going on here in this last EQ is this additive shelf. It's about 8 dB starting at 880. Here's what it sounds like without it again. And with it. Gives it that real pop, I think. It also brings out some of the uh, overheads or some of the hi-hat bleed as well. Not a huge deal for me, at least in this song. So that's the basis of my snare mix. I'm going to turn the reverb on as well. It's going to sound like a lot because I haven't automated it yet to fit the part, but... You get it. That'll be automated up and down to fit the different tempos and parts of the song. Um, so again, here's the super raw. And the, the mixed snare top mic. All right, now I'm gonna play it with everything in the mix.
Here's what the track sounds like with none of the plugins engaged on the top stair. So yeah, kind of a big difference. That sounds, obviously that sounds raw again. And you can tell that I'm letting the top snare mic do most of the heavy lifting. Yeah, there's a bottom snare. And yes, there's a snare sample that was included with the files. Uh, but those are just blended in as reinforcements. This, the bottom snare is adding a little extra sizzle. And that sample is just, just there to give it some more consistency, I suppose. Um, but there we go, man. That's what it sounds like. Till next time, Tommy out. So we hope we made it clear for you, there really is no definitive answer. Different situations and circumstances are gonna call for different approaches to your mix. Sometimes EQ before compression is gonna be more beneficial, sometimes after is gonna be more beneficial, and a lot of times it's both. If you want your music mixed by us at George Recording Studio, please contact any of the links in the low end. We look forward to chatting with you, and until next time, always use your blinker and change your strings. Okay. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> okay. I'm spitting everywhere. <clears throat> Devin plays fantasy football. <laughs> All right. Tommy drinks alcohol in the morning. <clears throat> Coffee, whiskey. Ready?